to stream broadcasting for you all today as I won't be around later this this evening unfortunately hold on let me go over to my mod view there we go I know we originally planned to do some more crash 3 in addition to today's stream but unfortunately uh, things just got a little bit crazy around here and I'm running slightly low on time so instead I wanted to give you all something that's probably going to be a bit more fun to watch in the form of more Spyro 2. Now, if you'll remember, last time we made quite a bit of progress in this massive second hub world. We cleared, all told, I want to say five stages, including uh, some ice and fire themed uh, sort of prehistoric stages and uh, a couple uh, worlds built around a, a conflict, a war between, of all things, slugs and extremely kitted out birds. All a fun time, of course, but now I think we're ready to head on in, <gasps> excuse me, to this massive castle. And probably start things off. by accessing that icy speedway stage. Which is over here? Yeah. Hey, Spanners, how's it going, man? Been a while. Um, yeah, this is early. I'm uh, gonna be heading out of town just for the, the, the afternoon. Uh, so we're broadcasting a bit early today. And thankfully, we're broadcasting a game I absolutely adore. been a while, man. Hope you've been well. Yeah, we're gonna tackle this next. This game's speedways are quite a bit more complicated than the first one, so these probably gonna take us a fair few tries, which is A-OK. -okay. Oh, shoot. Look at this. Okay, so we want to probably, yeah. How on earth is this one laid out? Yikes. Okay, so the guys in the snowmobiles and the the folks they're kind of carrying, parasailing through the air, they technically count as the toward the same objective. Got it. And we need to flame these things as well, I guess. Yeah, we're not gonna get it, but at least we have an idea where everything is. And did pretty well. Spinner says, finally got that Luigi's Mansion 3 video out. I haven't been able to make streams because they're pretty late where I am. Oh, no worries, man. I got you. Um, I'll have to check the video out as well. I'm looking forward to that. Hey, Spyro, what's going on? I'm, I'm doing all right. Thanks. We're just working our way through the Reignited trilogy slowly but surely. How have you been? Maybe we should take out the parasailers first, and then go back around for the snowmobiles. Like so. Yeah. That's the way to do it.
Oh, and here are the arches we missed. Good. Yep. Time limit on this one seems kind of generous, actually, which is good, of course. Given that the uh, last one, the Metro Speedway, was really tight, actually. There we go. Here's our last dragons, or sea serpents. Now we've just got a couple of those ice skaters we've got to find. Jeez, if we can. Unreal, we're gonna miss, oh, oh. Yes! <laughs> just barely. Spanner says I really want to get Battle for Bikini Hot Bottom rehydrated next, but this and Crash seem like good picks too. Um, if you're looking just for like something you can squeeze a lot of really enjoyable playtime out of, uh, I think they're both excellent uh, remaster collections. Probably gonna have to give the nod to Spyro though. Um, now Crash is a lot of fun, of course, but yeah, I just don't think you get quite as much there. Um, and I would argue these games are slightly better made. Um, the Spongebob remaster looks great as well, though, of course. Okay, now let's find our, excuse me, our quest giver for this stage. Gotta get that orb, probably from another race with Hunter. Spanner says, Crash seems like the edge because of the new game coming out this year, too. Ah, uh, very true, very true. I'm looking forward to that, I really, really am. Okay. Now, the quest givers in these things seem to be pretty well uh, hidden. Spar says, good, uh, just got my new uh, VR PC and Oculus Rift. Hey, right on, congratulations. I've never tried any of the VR headsets, but they look like just a great way to spend a couple afternoons. All right. Oh, the igloo, maybe? Yeah. There he is. Looks like you're ready for a more serious challenge. How about a little paragliding? You're not afraid of heights, are you? Uh, sure. Right. I'll tow you Don't know. my snowmobile, and you maneuver through the rings. Don't miss any, or we'll have to start over. Spanner says the only crash game I've played was the kart racer platformer hybrid on the PSP. Forgot the name. Oh, in that case, the uh, Crash Remaster uh, trilogy is a really, really strong recommendation from me. Uh, they're really solid, if very difficult, platformers. And uh, now they sell the original, like, Insane Trilogy in a bundle with the remastered or remade uh, Crash Nitro Racing, I think is the name, or Crash Nitro Kart, something like that. The big racing game. Unfortunately, they crammed a bunch of microtransactions in it because, you know, of course. But it's still a really solid game, I think. All right, and it's, oh, that's a lot of rings. Okay, we can probably maybe sort of do this. Oof. Oh god, this is stressful. Are we gonna are we gonna do it though? Yes we are! Oh thank god. Way to go, Spyro. 
You're even better than I am. Spinner says, I think it's Crash Team Racing. Nitro was the sequel, if I recall. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's one of them. I, I think Crash Team Racing might have been one of the games I had for a kid, or as a kid. Um, I, I remember I owned one of them, like, for the GameCube, and it was all right. Uh, Spinner says, Rings, do I make a Sonic joke or Superman 64 joke? I was thinking Superman 64, because there's quite a few fly-through rings challenges in this game. Naturally, they control far better than Superman 64's, but... <laughs> God, they're stressful. Um, and Spyro says it's one of the most relaxing stress relievers I've ever experienced. Really? The, the VR headset? That's great. Um, I know they're making more and more, like, high-quality experiences for those kinds of, of devices all the time. There was, uh... There was that, like, uh... Star Wars, the the rise of Vader, or something like that, um, that was released episodically, like a year or so ago, and people absolutely love that one. It's called Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled. That's the one. That's the one. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, it looks absolutely amazing, and I'd love to do a stream or two of that for you guys at some point, because I love me a good kart racer. Especially one that's just a feast for the eyes. Now, did we get everything in Icy Speedway? Yes, we did. Hey. And I think we've already offered all the payments we could to Winnie the Jackass for this world, so everything should be open to us at the moment. Spinner says, I saw someone beat that without the gas pedal. Oh, wow. How? how? That sounds amazing. Is it like the... Is it Crash's answer to Luigi wins by doing nothing? Well, let's take on what is almost definitely going to be a fire-based stage once again. Scorch. Sounds good to me. The speedways are a good bit of fun, but I just always love seeing what crazy new theme or challenges the platforming stages are going to have for us. Spinner says, I think it was using drifting as dingo dial. Oh, wow. Oh, oh god. It's weirdly proportioned children. I was expecting a fire base stage, you know, from the name, but... Oh. What on earth? So these... Okay, so this is an Arabian-style stage. Very cool, one of my favorite aesthetic themes in terms of architecture, music, things like that. Um, and it looks like these... Grimace golem things have kidnapped a small child. All right. That's... Hello, Spyro. My brother Handel and I have been sent here to blow up this castle, but Handel got caught by these evil soldiers, and I'm stuck out here. <laughs> Spinner says, "Haven't seen the video in a while, so I can't recall perfectly." And kids, the true enemy. If you can open the doors that blocked the way, I can find Handel, oh. and we can complete our super secret spy mission. Oh, that's supposed to be a cute manner of speech instead of an annoying one, isn't it? Well, sorry. Oh, God! Oh, Grimace, don't mess around. They got attack camels? Damn, we're, we might be out of our depth here, folks. Seriously, though, this is a absolutely gorgeous stage. I mean, check this thing out. And, uh... Also, let me know if the audio balance is a bit off, by the by, because we often have to adjust it when we switch games. And, uh, I really want you guys to be able to hear this game soundtrack. It's amazing. Spanner says, why are German fairy tale characters in Arabia? Well, 
They're, they're not Hansel and Gretel, they're Handel and Greta, so t totally different. Just I any similarity there is purely coincidental. <laughs> um, and Spyro says, I've got an awesome Spider-Man game for VR that's a free roaming swing around the city freely in first person. Oh man, that sounds, well, as you said, both very relaxing and also very cool. Spanner says, I can hear the music in SFX fine, by the way. Awesome, man. Thanks for letting me know. Uh, yeah, I really want that for you guys because the, the score in this game is amazing. So, to, to be clear, we're just invading some random country and, like, butchering all of their their guards, it would appear. But it's all worth it, because we gotta get that talisman. Spyro says, I, it is, but I'll warn you that it's not for someone who has any sort of fear of heights. Oh, I'm fine there, man. I'm A-OK -okay there. Oh, hey, it's Hunter. The guy who's supposed to be helping us, but seems to lock a bizarre number of the, the treasures that we absolutely need to progress behind arbitrary speed challenges. How's it going, man? Spinner says they did kidnap a child, so it's justified. We don't know what the kids are here for. They could be saboteurs. They could just look like children. Okay. Just charge the tree before I get hit. I'll be able to catch the monkeys as they fall. Follow me. We're we're collecting a barrel of monkeys. That's precious. All right. Ooh. Oh, are you kidding me? Okay, so we've got to knock them down first. Wait until he's in the vicinity, then knock them down again. Gotcha. Just sending those suckers flying straight into the hammer space barrel. Oh, oh, we going over here. All right, down you go. Ah, there we go. This will do it. Spanner says that's a fair point, but child-sized adults don't tend to fall for blatant traps. I would hope not. I mean, <laughs> Spyro says I'm looking forward to the day they make a Spyro game for VR. That would be amazing. Man, at this point, I would just go for a really properly done Spyro 4, not Enter the Dragonfly. We don't we don't talk about that one. Um, and Spinner says they look like a boo from Aladdin. Oh my god, they kind of do. And, like, the architecture and color palette here are very evocative of, like, the original look for Agrabah from the first Aladdin film. Uh, so I, given the, the time this game was produced, like, late 90s, I have to wonder if that was intentional. Sparrow says they have a new Spyro coming out in 2021. No way, man, really? With, with the new crash and now this? Oh, man. I'm so excited to see so many of these classic platformers getting, like, true returns to form for this console generation. That is fantastic news. I'm gonna have to keep an eye out on that one. <laughs> Spanner says this is Aladdin World confirmed game theory. 
Well, I mean, they had to use those Agrabah assets for something, and since they didn't need them for Kingdom Hearts 3... Now, most stages in this game, according to our resident Spyro expert, have, um, or were very intentionally designed to act as, uh, counterparts, sort of distaff counterparts to others. So, for instance, we had, um, uh, fire and ice-themed prehistoric stages that were literally set opposite each other in this, uh, hub world. We had stages that seem to explore both sides of a conflict between snails and birds. Uh, basically, Spyro got to attack each species' homeworld on behalf of the other. So I'm curious to see what, if anything, would be this beautiful stage's counterpart. Spyro says, I just hope they don't flood the new games with microtransactions. Unfortunately, man, it sounds like... Uh, the new Crash is going to have in-game purchases, that's just disgusting, honestly. But if it's just kept to cosmetic skins like that, will I like it? No. Will it still be an enjoyable time for me and all of us here on stream? Yeah, hopefully. Um, Spyro, I'm hoping and praying they don't. They seem to have handled this property well, well, I say they handled this property a bit better than I remembered Skylanders was a thing. Never mind, let's just hope and pray. Spinner says, how do snails fight back? Um, kind of pathetically, really. Uh, you feel quite bad fighting them. Because all of the birds, for instance, uh, are armed with really high-end uh, explosive ordnance. Like, there are these kind of hawk-looking things that will just chuck missiles at you. Whereas the snails have, uh what appear to be flamethrowers that just spray seltzer water, or they spit bubbles at you. And they are naturally much, much slower than the birds are. Oh my god! <laughs> we just hit the jackpot, folks. Woo! Spinner says, how the hell do birds get ballistics? Well, we actually have an answer for that in lore. Um, Winnie the Jackass, that is to say Moneybags the Bear, who extorts us for uh, just about anything we need to progress, actually sold a massive shipment of arms to the birds, and openly admits this to us because we need to pay him in order to access their homeworld. Curious to see where the power-up arch will be for this world. Oh, it's up there. Super flame. These poor guys. This whole city is just going to be empty by the time we're through. Spinner says, well, he sounds like a swell guy. Oh, he is. He, uh... By the time we were through with the first hub world, he had already asked us for the equivalent of 10% of all the currency present in the entire game. Charming dude. Spyro says, they could be doing to Crash 4 what they did with the Insane Trilogy and putting DLC levels in the game at first. I hope it's just restricted to that, man. I really do. Um, Spinner says, DLC lets you play as Cortex's left shoe. <laughs> Okay. Spyro, you make a great secret agent. Now Handel and I can complete our mission. By I called way, it! You can I called it! They're saboteurs! I honestly had no idea that was the story. But... <laughs> we just... <laughs> we just destroyed the population of this entire settlement. Hey, MC, how's it going, man? We destroyed the entire population of this city. Like, they're, they're all gone. So these kids could do... Some kind of clandestine act here. Oh my god, no. Spyro, why? Hey Spyro, 
We need those flags to Spinner says pay double for the two shoe pack. The flag keeper keeps stealing them. If you can knock the flag keeper down, you could bring the flags back. I'm picturing something like uh Oh, the uh, shoe race or shoe chasing segments from Rayman 3, where you have to shrink down and ride one shoe around like a bit of a bumper car trying to ram the other one into submission. My secret decoder ring says that this power up thing should help you. Oh my god, what have we done? We've, well, we've got most of the gems, that's a, a good thing, I guess. All right, so where is our target? MC says this is a fun level. Yes, oh, it really is. The lore behind it's kind of horrifying, but we'll find them. No worries. Okay, we must have to go a bit further back. You terrible child war criminal. There we go. Okay. Ah, oh, I see. Ooh. Oh, they just knock us out. Okay, that's not what I was expecting, but this is a fun little challenge, I guess. Ooh. So being methodical here honestly seems like the best approach, seeing that it looks like we can't exactly catch up with him properly. Let's just cheese it out, kids. Yeah, that's the way. There you go. Oh, and he just gives up that time. Okay, we've just got to do this a couple more times, alright. Sparrow says, fun fact, in the original name game, his name is Bombo. Huh. Wonder why they changed it. Uh, Spinner says, uh, hear me out here instead of loot boxes, shoe boxes. That'd be brilliant. Every time you level up in one of these multiplayer shooters or whatever, you just get a nice new pair of shoes for your character. I dig that. Um, and... It, yeah. Yeah, like, we don't have new skins, we just have new shoes. Um, let's go find our, our guy. There he is. Spinner says, I feel like Rayman, Crash, or Spyro are shoe in for at least one of the DLC characters in Smash. I would love that, and I, I feel like Rayman would probably be your best suit overall. Spanner says, bro, I got prestige five time for some Yeezys. says it's because people were saying his, his name was offensive. I don't... Uh, really? I don't Still see that. Flags, it could just be a reference to Toys for Bob. I mean, there were NPCs with that name in the first game, I believe.
Okay, so you actually do want to take this really slowly. Two. Spanners asks, why does becoming a zebra make his fire breath stronger? Well, no, see, he doesn't become a zebra. He gets all of these glowing, glowing horns and effects along his underbelly and all that. Which would be perfect for, like, a luminescent toy. Something that, say, lights up when you press a button or something like that. It's all about the merchandising, baby. This, this is a totally separate Spyro action figure. Could be a brand new Skylander, eh? And here we go again. You won't get my last flag so easily, purple beast. Almost there. These runs don't seem to be getting much harder. Uh, he threw way more bombs in the second one, and seems to have kept that rate of fire consistent here. But they, they've just gotten longer. MC says his name has been changed, quote, his name has been changed to Bob the Flag Keeper, presumably to avoid alleged race, racial stereotyping towards Middle Eastern inhabitants. Seems legit. Uh, the achievement name seems to have gotten changed as well. Um, huh. I mean, I, I guess... I, 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 I can see that. I can see why you might want to do that. That's... yeah. And Spinner says, I suppose fire inside of his body could make him glow red hot. Well, that and make him just a precious doll, action figure, or plush for this holiday season. So, do we have- oh no, wait, we still have that iron chest to break open. Ah. And this should be... Is this everything we were missing? No, we are 12 short. Okay, well, it's not a super long stage. We can dig around till we find it. Spinner says, I don't think I've seen a regular Spyro plush your action figure bar the Skylanders. I... I want to say I did when I was very small. Like back when Spyro was still a hot property in and of itself without the rather weirdly exploitative toys to life thing attached to it. Well, this'll help, of course. There we go. So they were all on the chest, we just missed a couple. Good stuff. Alright, now that these horrible children have, like, exterminated an entire village, time for us to go home. What on earth? Spanner says I'm waiting for Sonic Adventure remakes with the same naming convention as these remakes. I I would love that. Can't think of a re for them though. Um hmm. Uh Sonic, the reaccelerated duology.
Or maybe we could just show some love to the series MVP and just call it like Sonic the Hedgehog the Big the Cat Collection. Because I mean, I, I think we all know he's the reason why we we really tune in to, to the Sonic. MC2M says Sonic risk-free. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, nothing will ever be risk-free for Sonic the Hedgehog ever again. Sonic Adventure reshoed, retied. Um, Fracture Hills is up next. Maybe this will be our distaff counterpart to Scorch. Maybe Spyro just gets to run around, like, shooting fireballs at horrible, like, demonic magic children. Spanner says they just leave the original models but update his soap shoes. Oh, that'd be great. Oh. So we've got like a vaguely Gaelic theme here with Hellenic satyrs and fawns. Hmm. Spur says, I really wish they would remake Sonic Heroes. Uh, Sonic Heroes was a pretty solid game. Yeah, um, first on my list, though, would be just getting a great remake of the original Sonic Adventure. Um, not entirely because I am legitimately a massive Big the Cat fan, but also because, um, the, uh, well, hello there, so many of that game's <laughs> campaigns were amazing. I wish I could take you on a tour of our temple, but a bunch of lousy earth shapers have encased it in stone. Right. Uh, Spinner says this man got a motherfucking Medusa shovel. They do. They do. There don't seem to be that many of them, though. So maybe there's not going to be quite as much combat as there was in, uh, yeah, we can't do anything to them, because they stone. Um, so I'm thinking... We'll need to find some kind of power-up or something to deal with them effectively. Can we... Oh, we can free the... The satyrs. Oh, and are they going to disable the Earth Shapers? Oh, they're going to do something. Oh, lord. Oh, so we're like breaking the great hall out of the the stone. Well, this certainly isn't. Oh God! So not only the mineral, not only do the minerals want to kill us, but the plant life does as well. Oh, good. Um, Spanner says that the pickaxe from Minecraft, and Spyro says you could charge the Earth Shapers into the lava. Good to know, thank you. Typically, you can't charge larger enemies, that was why I was a bit apprehensive. got shrubbery and trees that are just out for blood. This, this is an unusually hostile world. MC says there's another way to deal with the stone people, if I recall. Well, it looks like somehow we're going to be able to, like, uh, like, um, sort of melt all of this igneous rock back into, like, a lava state, and that can, like, defeat some of them, like this guy, for instance, but... As far as I've been playing this for 20 plus years, I got your back. Well, thank you very much. Um, and Spanner says, but you play as a tr can you play as a tree? Worthless. Mario Odyssey is better. I will agree, Mario Odyssey is probably one of the best platformers of all time, but this is still really, really good. I... I would love to, like, go incognito as a little fire-breathing dragon tree. That'd be precious. Okay. Oh, that's just... morbid. <laughs> I 
Hello. Yeah, so it looks like there has to be a more efficient way of dealing with these. Uh, Spinner says, become the dragon fruit. Yes. Yes. Yeah, this is going to become some kind of supercharge path at some point, I think. Or something. So it's probably best to keep working the perimeter for now. Spanner says Spyro enter the dragon fruit. Oh god. Enter the dragonfly was such an unfortunate little disaster. MC says in the original, bashing the golems over and over was dangerous. You needed precise timing. Really? Well, I know they've changed quite a few things for this release. Slowly but surely getting there. Spanner says, does this game remind you how to glide every three minutes? So we actually counted um, in the game's like tutorial stages, and I could only see maybe three separate mentions of how to glide and how great it is. Sparrow says, I love the bagpipe music in this level. Oh no, yeah, it's really great. The soundtrack for this stage and the last were both fantastic. Spanner says, damn, they really improved their craft. Yeah, no, maybe by the time we get around to uh, Spyro 3, they'll just mention it once, and I will lose one of my favorite running jokes for this series of playthroughs. It's great to be free. Now there's only one Seder left to rescue. I, I know, thank you. That's why there's... There's a little counter in the lower right-hand side of the screen. But thank you. Spanner says it's okay, just make running jokes from other series. Um... Uh, okay, got, uh, some, something, uh, Huge Hammer. Uh... We'll find an excuse to incorporate Huge Hammer into these playthroughs. Oh, a dragon! Perhaps you can help. My friend is locked in this room and lost the key. Do you know how hard it is to find a locksmith at this time of night? Break down the door. Well, we can do that. Once we get some kind of upgrade, supercharged probably. This looks like a supercharged level if ever I've seen one. There we are. Looks like we've got a pretty big audience today, so first off, thank you to everyone for dropping by, whether you're active in chat or just watching. I really appreciate your presence this afternoon. Glad you could drop by. Ah yes, indeed I shall explore the temple. Now these guys are standing just right on the edge of these lava pools, so might as well get rid of them. There we go. Ah, yeah, there we go. Supercharge. Knew it. Okay, so we actually want to avoid them. Largely. Oh, oh, we can we can do this this other way, I'm certain. Oh no, we can't. Oh look at that. Oh 
Oh wait, it's Hunter. Oh dear. Oh, hi Spyro. You're a sight for sore eyes. I'd appreciate it mightily if you could locate that alchemist. He owes me a favor. Right, okay, just just a minute. This poor guy never seems to stop getting himself into very situationally specific trouble. This must be our alchemist. We'll get to him in a bit. First up, we've got loot to collect. Like, a lot of loot. Okay, we've already got a majority of the gems. That's a good sign. Right, can't flame them. Just reflex at this point. Spanner says, Alchemist be like, I want to make a rock to make other rocks shinier. Hey, pow, however they, they make that bread, they've got to get on that grind. That weird, weird alchemical grind. Okay, so we want to... Yeah, yeah. No, we, we actually want to follow that tunnel, probably. Just follow the path, I guess. Y'all remember how great I am at supercharged segments. Oh, 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 God, oh. Oh, this is gonna be a tough one, actually. A lot of operation with pretty sudden curves and... Spinner says it's not much of a grind when you literally make money from worthless stuff. Well, I mean, you... You've got to work on your sales pitch, no doubt. Oh. Damn. Well, we're, we're close now. We're very, very close. Ah. There you go. Enjoy. No! We're so close! We're so close to the door we need to smash down for that one orb. But also a bunch of loot, it looks like. So, let's just keep going. We're almost there. This is a pretty low-risk path, at least. We're not in serious danger of dying or anything. There we go. Yeah. Oh, thank goodness you broke that door down for me. I thought I'd be stuck in here forever. I found this fancy orb in here. Please take it. So I wonder if there's some sort of mythological in joke I'm missing regarding the fawns and their love of the yo-yo, or if it's just meant to be like a cute little uh, accoutrement to their character design. Spyro says, I actually have every single game in the Spyro series, including the GBA and DS games. Wow, that's... Not only is that some dedication, that also includes a lot of great and a few really, really bad games, as I'm aware. Um, and Spanner says, this is utterly out of left field, but has the U.S. realized how unfunny James Corden is yet? Because we still don't want him back. <laughs> I, I'll say this. Um, like a lot of late-night hosts, is he particularly funny? No. Not consistently, but he does seem like a charming guy. And really, for that kind of program, that's what we want. Like, just someone who's pleasant. 
Fair says, wasn't there a crossover Crash game on GBA? Oh, there were two. There was Spyro Orange and Crash Purple, one of which was like a standard side-scrolling platformer, I think, and the other of which was a bizarre minigame compilation that was terrible. Um, not entirely sure which is which. I could be misremembering, but that's what I, I recall. Just 60 gems left to go. Good. Alright, another one of the alchemist's labs, it looks like. Spinner says Mario and Sonic been real quiet since Crash Purple and Spyro Orange. <laughs> well, first off, they both sound like the names of off-brand sodas to me. Oh, yeah, Spyro says both of them were minigame collections. You're probably thinking of Season of Ice or Season of Flame. Probably, yes. Um... But no, they just sound like Fanta knockoffs to me. I mean, that probably says more about me than it does about the game's production, but... Yeah! There we go. God help me, I think I might actually be getting the hang of this uh, supercharged thing, slowly but surely. All right, Alchemist. With a new I'd like to try it out. Spanner says, God, it's been eight months since I've drunk any soda. Good for you, man. That's that's amazing. Great. Just keep those earth shapers away from me. And I'll take this potion to Hunter. Well, that doesn't sound too bad. Dude, what, what path are you taking? Oh, right, a roundabout path that's going to go by every single golem on the field. Good. Will you ask What? Dude, are you serious? MC says, ah oh, yes, the worst minigame. Well, there is worse. I Honestly, that it, it wasn't really tricky or anything, Man, but do my feet feel better. that was a clearly extraneous escort mission. Like he deliberately went out of his way to take the most roundabout indirect path that would put him in the most danger possible. Oh, so we need a new ability to get the last orb here. I gotcha. Probably something we learn in the final hub world from Jackass the Pooh. Um, uh, we're probably going to have to supercharge through that, aren't we? Hopefully the rest of our gems will be in there. Nope. Nope. We good. Spinner says tedious is worse than tricky. MC says tricky and tedious is the worst. True. Um... 
So that was just tedious, luckily. You're probably expecting me to say MC yeah, says remembers the mushroom mini game. Sorry, short stuff. I was only in here because I like the peace and quiet. Anyway, the other fawns wanted me to give you this talisman. Uh, thank you. We'll be back for that. It's a series of horned pan pipes. Nice. We'll be back for that last orb, don't you worry. And real quick, guys, give me just a moment. Literally a quick moment. I'm going to go transfer a load of laundry from the washer to the dryer. So I'll be back with you probably in less than 90 seconds. No worries. Alright, so sorry for any additional noise you might hear coming from the, the dryer, but we're back and we've got about another hour to today's stream. Oh, and real quick, uh, Michael, thanks a lot for the follow, man. Really appreciate it. Sparrow says, I've got two words to say about the worst minigame, Crystal Popcorn. Oh dear. Spanners coming in hot with deer people or just worse goat people. I mean, you know, fair. I, I tend to like the, the horns on a character design, but yeah, fair. Now we got one more orb. Let's just keep that in mind and carry on to our next stage right over here. Magma cone. All right, so this is clearly going to be a, a fire-based stage, right? I mean, come on. Billy Goat's got the goat facial hair. <laughs> and Spyro says Alora just so happens to be my favorite character. Nice. That joke didn't work, I should have said goat. Speaking of, here are the goat people. There go the goat people. So this is clearly intended, like looking at the architecture and the NPCs, to be the counterpart to the Fractured Hills. So I wonder what these goat people are going to be like. Hello, Spyro. I suppose you're here for the party. I'm afraid it's been cancelled because the stupid Earth Shaper set off the volcano. Oh, the golems are causing trouble here as well. Yeah, so this is definitely the counterpart to the last stage. Oof. Oh, this is gonna be tricky. Spinner says, oh no, they're Irish. Uh, I think the last ones were meant to be Scottish, right? Like... Very vaguely uh, Scottish or, or Gaelic, but. Or no, Celtic, I should say. Oh, wait, no, no, I, I see what we want to do. We want to push them over there, so. Yay, we can annihilate these sentient creatures. Woo! <sighs> Nothing like celebratory dance after a good murder.
Ooh. That was foolishness on my part. There we go. Let's see what else we got over here. Probably just a ton of loot, right? Yeah. This looks like it's probably going to be a slightly more compact stage than the last one, but with a bit more to do, maybe? This is also going to be a supercharged stage, then. I've no idea. It looks like there are alternate means of dealing with the uh, Earth Shapers, so maybe not. Wait, hold on. We can probably get over to that. From here. Yes, sir. There we go. Ooh. Fascinating, there appears to be a frozen area down there. Might actually want to come back here after we've explored a bit more of the stage itself. Oh. Okay, okay, I see you. Well, this stage is just drowning us in gems right from the start. Many of them are in smaller denominations, but still. Spanner says, ah oh, yes, the icy Irish in the previous land was the sweaty Scottish. Well, it, it would appear to be. Because, oh, God! These satyrs do not play around and seem particularly happy after committing a, a good old homicide. A digital homicide, if you would. Spinner says, looking forward to the wet Welsh. Who knows, maybe. Maybe we'll get all kinds of different, like, uh, vaguely Western European um, woodland creatures. The warfare-loving uh, birds and slugs were both blatantly American, of course. With the slugs being some kind of, like, very friendly hillbilly people, basically. Alright, I guess now's as good a time as any to go check out the ice pit. Hey, you see that crash? No ice physics. Oh, and here in this world as well, Hunter's got a couple of orbs for us. Related to some kind of special, I don't know, ice skating challenge? Let's play a little game. Every so often a piece of this crystal popcorn pops out of the ground. Oh no. First one to grab ten of them wins. I'm ready when you are. First off, what in the hell is crystal popcorn? Oh, God, how, how am I even supposed to...
There we go. Okay, this is not the best time in the world, but doable so far. We got the ganked trophy, I guess, for stealing a piece of popcorn right out from beneath Hunter's horrible snout. Okay, you win. Here's an orb. There's a harder version, isn't there, Hunter? I'll give you another orb if you can beat me again. Let's play to 15 this time. Oh what dear. I'm ready when you are. Oh, this one's much harder, apparently. Ooh. Well played, sir. Well played. I'm sure there's like a trophy for totally shutting him out. But, uh, that would be hard. Okay, we're doing alright so far. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ah, uh, that's what changed. This time he'll, like, stand over pieces about to rise out of the ground and grab them on the way up. And there we go. Really good. Not too bad. To Difficult to see where the popcorn was coming one. from at first, yes, but were, we yeah. learned our way around it. I bet that one was much harder in the original release. Um... Our, our resident Spyro expert, Show Me the Nugget, said a lot of the mini games were made a little bit more accessible. But, okay. Two orbs from the world's most useless companion. Good to get. Now I guess we just keep on heading up the mountain. Oh, God. It's everybody's favorite friendly neighborhood arms dealer. Oh, let's grab that extra life while we can. Thank you. Well, if it isn't my best customer, the elevator in the next room can take you to the volcano. You can have unlimited use of the elevator for a one-time fee of only a few gems. Hey, well, we've been really thorough with our gym collection, so that's not too bad. Simply step onto the elevator, and it will take you to the bottom. When you want to come back up, just step on it again. Oh, this is very fancy. Oh, and there's plenty of loot down here. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, and on top of all the other classic platformers we've got coming back, there's going to be a brand new Ratchet & Clank game released before too long for a PS5, I want to say? Or, like, this generation and the next? Really looking forward to that, guys. And it's going to be, like, a proper full-length Ratchet & Clank game for the first time in a, a good while, I want to say. All right, so there's some gems around the perimeter of this thing. Good to know. But I bet our talisman's going to be up here, right? Spinner says, oh yeah, the new Lombax, I forgot. Oh man, I'm looking forward to that. I need to play into the Nexus. I never got around to that one. By the here's a talisman I was saving for the party later. I think you deserve it more. Well, thank you, Bippo. It's a... Uh, it's like a beer stein. Great. Oh, but there's still lots to do here. 
including what appears to be a super flight challenge. Interesting. Hey, Spyro. You're just in time for the party. Well, you would be if those nasty lava monsters hadn't stolen our hats. <sighs> it just won't be the same without party hats. Oh, no, of course not. Um... All right, so we need to shoot down all of these guys in one circuit, probably. Well, I I tried to shoot you down. Oh no, we need to pick up the lava rocks and use them, like we did in the prehistoric stage. Right, right. Ah, damn. Lord almighty. Okay, this one's rated as a more difficult mission, and I can definitely see why. Ah, oh, man. Do we... Yeah, we probably have to restart, but that wasn't too bad for a first attempt, I don't think. Well, maybe they just want to come to the party, too. There's certainly no reason to kill them all, save this is Spyro, and that's just kind of what he does. There we go. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Flight controls in tight spaces. Little tricky. Little tricky. Here, this got mixed in with the cheese balls, and I almost chipped a tooth on it. Lovely, there's our third and final orb for this world. Good stuff, y'all. Most of the remaining gems should be amongst those that we just dropped to the ground. Looks like each of those vases contained a tenor. How many are we missing? 23. Okay. Well, none of them are over here. And if they're not here, odds are good they're back outside of the volcano. Right, so let's go check out the earlier sections of the stage first. I'm trying to avoid using the Sparks radar, which I didn't even know was a thing until the last stream, because I feel like half of the fun of this game is tracking down um, unusual uh, or, or hard-to-find gems. Spanner says, oh god, I love the new Smash character. You know, I've actually not played the game since any of the DLC characters came out. Really want to. Um, but yeah, Min Min from, uh, ARMS is a great choice, I think. That's a game that really needs some more love. You know?
Okay, so there's a couple different ways we could do this. There we go. Could this be all of them? Hey, it was! Wow. Nice little treasure trove there. Now let's just conclude this properly by heading to the level exit. And we shall be done with satyrs and fawns for a little while. Gotta remember to go back to Fractured Hills once we learn how to head bash, I guess. It's gonna be like a super, well, not super charge, but an enhanced charge attack. This is a very well-designed climbing segment. This game does a lot of its, like, core mechanics really, really, really well. I can't say there's been any, or really... Yeah, no, really any sections where I felt like the control or camera were impeding my abilities to, like, or my chances of success. Really well-designed game overall. As one could expect. Oh, crap, no, we, we need the super flight to get to... the end. There we go. Oh god. <laughs> Spyro 2, ladies and gentlemen, everybody's horrible. Spanner says, oh, who did you main? Um, believe it or not, one of my favorites, probably not my favorite character to control, but the character I was best with, at least, like, in the Journey of Light mode, etc., was Bowser. That, like, uh, sideways smash drop kick is a ridiculously powerful move, and pretty easy to execute, honestly. So I bet here we're going to see the other, this will be like the Distaff Arabian stage, Shady Oasis. Looking forward to this. At least in Brawl, I was also quite good with Meta Knight and DDD, and, um... Oh god, I'm trying to recall a uh, Game & Watch, actually. Spinner says, yeah, whenever I had trouble, I used Bowser or DK. Yeah. Oh, hey, it's the, uh... It's the Egg Thieves from the first game. I guess they've got... A new scheme to run on us, and yeah, it is another Arabian stage, right on. Spyro, it's a good thing you're here. I've been trying to get a berry out of this magic berry bush, but I'm just not strong enough. If Spinner says completely bush, opposite ends of the tier lost for brawl. brawl there, huh? Yeah. Or tier list, yeah, yeah, definitely. I also really enjoyed playing as Rob, but just found it was he was a really difficult character to get to work really properly. So we've got just two orbs this time around. Oh wow, look at this place. It's gorgeous. Oh, that guy had a Kopesh, a traditional, very large Egyptian sword. The large hook was intended to be used uh, to pry down an enemy shield and uh, follow up with a quick thrust once the uh, blade was level with their torso. 
terribly effective weapon for the Old Kingdom. Well, at least I think they were around at the time of the Old Kingdom. Certainly, I think the Middle Kingdom, at least. Obviously, we want to avoid the water here. It's green, which signifies, you know, not exactly healthy for the world's most fragile little dragon to, to deal with. Oh, got an orb up there. Spinner says, what wasn't Egypt good at, though? Uh, very fair. Fair point. One of the most fascinating civilizations of the ancient world. Not exactly a controversial opinion, but <laughs> very true. Okay. So our gimmick here seems very straightforward this time. We're just going to be feeding our little buddy so he can temporarily grow and break down some gates for us. Looks like we're working our way kind of towards that tower in the center of the, the oasis. Thankfully, he didn't actually hurt us. Lots of enemies in these stages. Well, this world stages as a whole, we're seeing not exactly more difficult enemies, but lots more of them. Which is cool, because I love the enemy designs for this game, and the fact that there's, like, totally unique enemies for every single stage. It would have been so easy for them to just reuse the same little handful that fulfilled the same purpose, but they did not. Nice. Ooh! We technically banged our head on the, the roof of the arch there. Or the ceiling, I should say. Oh, that's where a bunch of our loot is. Okay. There we go. We're gonna need to use this little toxin ball to shoot down a berry for him here. I just now realize he probably could have taken care of them on his own, but hey. Well, that was quick and easy as pie, wasn't it? Now we can eat berries all the time. Here, take this. It's a gift from all of us hippos. So this time we've killed a whole bunch of people in what appears to be their their natural habitat. Uh just because a hippo was hungry. Nice. Okay. So we've got proper thief chases once again. As well as another one of these magical vases. Oh, there's our first one. Spanner says, damn sorry I disappeared for a minute. I parried game and watch as oil spill and popped off. <laughs> oh, no worries, man. Hey, there's one. Nice, nice. These guys don't seem quite as quick as the thieves from Spyro 1. Also, you're helping a hungry, hungry hippo. I see. Yeah, no. Um, just because the hippos were hungry and wanted berries from that bush, we killed all the inhabitants of this little city. It's 
quickly becoming a theme in Spyro's adventures, I'm finding. Nice. Oh, there's our second lamp thief. No, 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 no. This looks like something we'll have to slam with a move we'll learn. Oh, that's probably the head bash. Spyro, my brothers have been trapped in solid rock. I'm afraid you'll need to. Oh, come now. Just teasing us with more stuff we'll have to revisit the stage for. That's all right, though. That's all right. Oh, no, you don't. Okay, this, this one's good. I will admit, this one's good. There we go. One more and we can get at least one of this world's orbs. Yes, all of the money. Thank you, thank you. Spinner says nothing better with breakfast like senseless genocide. <laughs> well, yeah, yes, fire has been killing a whole lot of like seemingly unique populations. When it would make just as much sense to just flame the hippo and take the talisman from it instead. Alright, now that last lamp thief might be in here, I want to say. No. Here. Here we go. Oh, good night. This one's fast. And really good at reversing direction right when he needs to. catch him eventually we are in fact catching up no oh. gotta be kidding me come on hey there we go thanks for bringing back the three magic lamps here, take this orb. Some fairy left it with me, but it won't hold a proper shine. Ah, of course. Thank you very much. Now, we're down a handful of gems, which are all probably in that... Well, some of them are in this vase, but some will be in that chest, probably. So we'll take care of this mystery vase, and then we will head out for now, since we can't get to the uh, the last orb for now. Okay, so we're just heading right across the courtyard, basically. Like so. And now to the very beginning of the stage, I want to say. Let's see. Yes. Yeah, meaning that there will be uh, right around uh, 20 gems. We'll know there will be exactly 20 gems in the uh, in the uh, head bash chest.
Meaning we can probably get in one more stage before uh, we have to call the stream for the day. And we're almost through seeing all of the stages this hub world has to offer, I believe. Once again, want to thank everybody for turning out today. Really appreciate you all, whether you're uh, active in chat or just hanging around in the live audience. I am so glad you're here. We typically stream a bit later than this, but, uh, you know, schedule got a little out of sorts today. Alright, let's head on home for now. They're winged hippos. Good going, thank you, thank you. Spyro, now that you have all 14 talismans, your guidebook can break the lock on the door, and you can fight Go. Are you ready? Uh, maybe later. Maybe later. I think there's somehow more stages, even though we technically have all the talismans. Maybe? Or maybe not. Oh no, that is in fact all of them for now. So, yeah, it looks like we might get to conclude today's stream with a proper boss fight. And seeing as how, unlike Spyro 1, this game seems to have pretty solid bosses, I'm well looking done, forward Spyro. to this. You'll have to jump down the hole in the floor to get to where Ripto and Gulp are waiting. I can help you out a little bit. I tamed some pterodactyls from Skelos Badlands. They'll be dropping in objects that you can use to fight Gulp. Good stuff. And after this, we'll be able to move to the Winter Tundra to face Ripto himself. It's a very conveniently placed throne, isn't it? Okay, so he's got some kind of magic cannons mounted on his shoulders. So he's gonna be like this really aggressive, like, mobile artillery platform, I'm guessing? Again, not the most creative design, kind of a boring design, really, but I'm expecting the boss fight to be great. Oh, dear. Oh, I know what to do. When he dives, yeah, dash under him. And then just ram, uh... Ram an explosive into him. Okay. Oh, jeez. Okay, this guy's actually kind of tough. Good going. This is a big step up from Spyro 1, isn't it? The orbs even track you, nice. Oh no, we... Yeah, there we go, baby. Oh no, Spanner says, yo, is that a mobile laser lizard? Yes, it is. Oh, God almighty. This... Is there a good chance we'll actually die in a Spyro boss fight? Right on. Okay. Well, maybe. There are... things sparks can devour, thankfully. Oh, 
Okay, as long as you don't move around a ton, he's not terribly dangerous when he's got his turrets out. Oh, ooh. Oh, did he just heal himself, though? Oh, no. Okay. So not only do we want the chickens so they can heal Sparks, we specifically need to target them so they can't heal him. Oh, damn. We actually died. Look at that. This... This is a fairly challenging boss. Good stuff, Insomniac. Okay, so it's pretty simple. Watch for chickens. Good advice for life in general, but... Come on. There we go. Now he's gonna bring out the cannons. Oh, he like just swatted that one away. Good. Rocket should be next. Those are the easiest to execute. Ooh. Jesus. So the idea is you can't move really much at all when he fires the the cannons. No, no, no. No, oh, come on. There we go. Thankfully, if we manage to prevent his healing properly, we get to heal ourselves instead. Oh. I'm like... very anxiously scanning the perimeter for chicken. Chickens, chickens, come on. Uh, you okay there, buddy? Whew. All right. Nope. Gotcha. Right in the nick of time, too. We're learning. God, a Spyro boss where you actually have to learn something. That's great. Come on, come on, come on. Is it close enough? Ah, oh, damn. I'm sorry, is he going to spit the rocket at us? Cute. Ooh. Can't slow down. Can't slow down once he starts charging. Okay.
Ooh, nice. So he's got different moves for each of the pieces of ordnance he can swallow. Oh, come on. It's gonna be harder and harder to hit him as time goes on, of course. Not this time, though. Just two more hits. And we get an easy one. Oof. All right. Good stuff so far. Enjoy. Yeah. There we go. We are now all set to head on to the Winter Tundra then, which we can explore for a bit before we have to hang it up for the day. Spyro, you did it! Whoa! Laura, where'd you come from? I was just outside the castle in Autumn Plains. The castle is now free again. There's no sign of Ripto. And since you've been around, the creatures of Avalar are finally starting to get along. I, I, I don't know about that. I've still seen golems and birds and slugs and all that trying to kill each other. wanted to do something nice for you. It's not much, but we hope you like it. Oh, wow, this is great. Aren't you going to join me? Uh, no. I'd like to, but I've got to go check on the professor in the winter tundra. He's still trying to fix the super portal so he can send you home. Oh, that sounds interesting. <sighs> I think I'll just hang out here for a while and soak up a few rays. Uh-huh. Hey, where did Laura go? I better follow her. Yep, so time to head on to the Winter Tundra then. the dragon worlds from the super portal this power crystal should give us the extra boost that we need just a few more calculations to set it up i think i have it excellent everything is finally ready we're going to need a lot more orbs but with the power crystal boosting it the super portal should work again <gasps> and welcome to the third act so you thought you had gotten rid of me. Well, I'm afraid not. I persuaded that fat bear money bags to sell me a Of course. Box. Quick, the power crystal. Of course. Don't even try. The unscrupulous money lenders behind all this. Or in favor of it anyway. This is just what I need for a new scepter. Hunter, do something quick. Uh, hey, give that back. Well, I tried. <laughs> you little fools! After I destroy you all with my new scepter, I'm going to rename this place Riptonia! <laughs> Looks like an absolutely beautiful hub world. I'm looking forward to this. Spanner says, God, they're incompetent. Oh, they're not as bad as the dragons from the first game. Those dragons couldn't do anything at all, or rather, they could do something and just chose not to, repeatedly. Ripto's still alive, and he's locked us out of the castle. Even worse, he's stolen our new power crystal for the super portal. Right, so, uh, let's get to fixing that. We've got a plethora of new stages, of course. The Mystic Marsh. Sounds interesting. Portals back to the first two hub worlds. We'll need to go back to Autumn Plains once we've got uh, the head crash. 
or head bash ability to get uh, our hands on its orbs. Might as well see if he'll sell us the new move now. It comes down to this. There's only one more thing I can teach you. And like all the best things, it uh, doesn't come cheap. Oh, of course not. A thousand gems, yeah, why not? It's very simple, really. All you must do is jump and then press the action button. Very good, so we can use it to, say, open up the castle. What's in here? Ah, more gems. Can we head bash this? No. Worth a shot. All right. That's more like it. So we now finally have the ground pound that seems to be requisite for every platformer from this age. And we got an orb. Nice. One of three for the Winter Tundra. Now what's over here? So this game's ice physics are actually very gentle, unlike, say, the Crash trilogy. It's some consolation that you've collected so many orbs. My high-tech portal here will take you to Cloud Temples. Ah, oh, great. Excellent. Thank you, Professor SpongeBob. Ooh. Can't miss a vase. Sorry if I'm a little quiet right now, I'm just trying to take all this in for the first time. So there's the super portal. I can see you've learned the value of orb Spyro. This touchy gate should work perfectly with the help of your impressive orb So finally we're getting payoff for all the orbs we collected. Ooh, Metropolis. Might want to save that one for last because like, high-tech cityscapes are among the best stages in classic uh, platformers, I find. So here's Robotica Farms. Might be... Well, all of these actually sound really interesting. The Second World stages were very good, but they generally had simpler, more traditional platformer, like, elemental themes. These seem quite a bit different. There's Ripto's Arena and more portals uh, back to the first hub worlds. Aha! And we've got another orb. Here we go. Now what exactly is down here? Ah, our third and final orb already. Good stuff. And the speedway, probably? One last speedway adventure for you, Spyro. It's not that expensive, you know. Oh, uh, sure. So this is a much smaller world, which makes sense. Um, our resident Spyro expert told me this game was rushed 
unfortunately. So, um, the, the original Spyro 2, that is. So, um, a lot of the content kind of had to be hurli hurriedly uh, assembled and thrown into, really, the second hub world. Ah, of course. Good. Alright, now we are missing a handful of gems. Where on earth could they be? Hmm. Curious. We're missing eight gems, to be specific. Maybe somewhere back around the ice cave? No, not over there, but... Oh, we can't get back there, all right. No dice there. Huh. Maybe they're underwater, like back near the first waterfall? I mean, that's gotta be it, right? We've been everywhere else. It's not a very large hub world, it's the smallest, in fact, I think. Which is a real pity, because it's gorgeous. Gotta be missing something, right? Like one vase or something.
Huh. Well, for the time being, I'm just well and truly stumped. Which is alright, that's not anything particularly new. Um... Well, with that, folks, I'm afraid we're actually gonna have to leave it for now as we're approaching two hours, and I'm about to have to hit the road here in just a minute. So, until next time, ladies and gents, thank you all so, so much for tuning in, whether you're joining us live uh, on Twitch TV uh, or catching the VOD after the fact on YouTube. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time uh, with me this afternoon. I really appreciate it, really appreciate you. We typically do stream a bit later, like probably 6 p.m. Central. I'm thinking of starting streams a bit earlier from here on out, but I'll keep you up to date about those developments as they, as they occur. Um, so until then, we will see you tomorrow, hopefully at 6 p.m., for some more Spyro, and probably a little bit of Crash 3's post-game wrap-up as well. So until then, thank you all so much and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.